In this lesson, we'll introduce the concept of Dirac delta function and we'll establish the convention that we'll use for defining its left and right tail integrals. Well, let's start by thinking about a simple rectangle function with a range from negative delta to zero and a height of one over delta so that its total area is equal to one. If we think of this as a probability density function, then the cumulative distribution function would look like this. That is, it would be zero before negative delta, and then it would increase linearly to one to a value of one at x equals zero. Now if we decrease delta, we'd get something that looks like this. And the pulse would get more narrow, and the cumulative distribution function would rise more quickly. Now in the limit of very small delta, we might represent the pulse with an upward pointing arrow, and the cumulative function would be a unit step function. Now in this limit, we call the unit area pulse the Dirac delta function, and we use the Greek symbol delta to denote it. Its cumulative distribution function is the unit step function, but it's important to think about what happens at the discontinuity when x is equal to zero. To examine that, let's break the integral from negative infinity to infinity into two integrals, one from negative infinity to zero, and another from zero to infinity. Now because the total integral must be equal to one, the sum of these two partial integrals must also be equal to one. Now one possible way to make that happen is to assign the left tail and right tail integrals to both have the value equal to one half. Another way is to assign a value of one to the right tail integral and a value of zero to the left tail integral. And yet another way is to assign a value of one to the left tail integral and a value of zero to the right tail integral. Now for our purposes, that is, to use the Dirac delta function in probability theory, we will adopt this convention where the left tail integral from negative infinity to zero is equal to one, and the integral from zero to infinity is equal to zero. Now you might note that this definition of the Dirac delta function reveals one of the most important things to keep in mind about this generalized function. All of our definitions are in terms of what the function does inside of an integral, not in terms of what it is. That is, we define this function in terms of how it behaves inside of integrals. And in that regard, the most important definition of what the Dirac delta function does is something called the sifting property, which shows how we use the Dirac delta to sift values from some function g of x. Now in a subsequent lesson, we'll expand on how these definitions are used to show how we, we will apply the Dirac delta function as a generalized probability density function.